Scouting Radio is listener supported. Help fund the station through your donations and purchases. Check out our online store at scoutingradio.com. We are only 29 days to this. Live from West Virginia, USA, the 2019 World Scout Jamboree on Scouting Radio. Yes, 29 days away. 29 days away to the World Scout Jamboree on Scouting Radio. We're going to be covering it live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter live. It's Justin Dawson with you. I joined the Irish contingent to the World Scout Jamboree at the weekend and I talked to Stephanie McCann, one of the contingent leaders. Bring all these Irish Scouts over to the World Scout Jamboree. Have a listen to this. Stephanie, you're leading up the Irish contingent to the World Jamboree. How many years have you been working behind the scenes at this now? Um, well, we, we started this um, about two and a half years ago, myself and Karen did, to, to run this as a joint um, leadership team. And it was about looking at the Swedish model um, of, um, of kind of a joint partnership um, to, to ensure that we had support for each other. Um, and we tried then to ensure that every role had the same idea that they'd have one, two people um, leading roles and it, we just felt it was an important way um, so you don't have that threat, particularly the fact that we're all volunteers and mm-hmm. um, that we all have our own jobs and our families so we needed to kind of put something in place that um, took away that whole you know, single point of dependency and so, If I was to yeah. g- give Say, give a guess of how many hours you've put into getting this all. We're at the last day, we must remind our listeners that we're at the last day before the next time all these scouts come together is in the airport. But how many days and how many hours have you put into this? I, 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 I actually couldn't quantify it at all. Um, like we, talk, we talk every day, um, you know, on the phone or whatever. I went to some members of the team, we meet once a month. We um, we kind of have we've had three contingent events, um, all of course requiring preparation and stuff. So it's kind of like it's more of a lifestyle than a than a time spent. Mm-hmm. You just you just keep kind of it's in, in the back of your mind all the time. Um, and you know what are the next things and the next steps you need to take in order to get us there. And in fairness, the true skaters are incredible, and the amount of time they put in. And the amount of themselves they put in in order to ensure that the young people get the experience that they um, they are looking forward to, um, they couldn't quantify it. Now, once we get to the Jamboree at the summit, will you be able to sit back and relax a bit? Will you be able to get involved in any of the activities or anything? Well, I mean, no, we won't sit back and relax because there's... You know, like we've been preparing for this for two years. Why would you sit down and, <laughs> and kind of n- not be involved in everything? But uh, the scouts are going to get an opportunity to do tons of stuff, so we're going to get a chance to, mm-hmm. to go around and, and see what we're doing. Now, what, uh, what exactly is the itinerary? I know there's about a week or so beforehand where you're not at the summit and then you have, you're going to Canada afterwards or somewhere going up to Canada. Oh, yeah. So, so basically... Um, the troops are flying out in two different, on two different days. The 18th of July, four troops will fly out. The 19th of July, four troops will fly out. And they fly to Washington, where we will stay a number of days in Camp Schneider, um, which is a scout camp site in, in Washington, mm-hmm. D.C. And they get to go to see them all, and they get to kind of relax and uh, just kind of acclimatise to the weather. There's no exact home hospitality you're, do, you're no. doing? No, not this time. No, we're not doing home hospitality. After the Jamboree, on the 2nd of August, we head to Niagara-on-the-Lake. It's a tiny, tiny town. Um, that we're just going to populate. Really. That we're going to populate. We're going to actually double well. their population size. Yeah. It was the site of the 1956 World Scout Jamboree. Mm-hmm. And it's basically a greenfield site. And we kind of thought it was just the fact that it was in a community. And community, it's just beautiful, you know, the clapboard houses, the streets with the trucks going up and down the road, and ice cream parlours, and it's just so pretty. Now, one thing that a lot of our listeners have been even emailing me in, because I'm the Irish reporter for Scouting Radio, the most sought-after necker at every World Scout Jamboree is 
the yeah, Irish Nectar. Yeah. So, uh, how many spare ones are you going to actually bring? Well, <laughs> we're not going to tell that <laughs> then, you know. Yeah, that, uh, secret. <laughs> that reduces their, you know, the, um, you know how how they're going to go. But the states have all had an opportunity to bring extra ones. Um, and there'll be extra badges as well. And there will, yeah. 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 Now, the, the, of course, the whole team for our Skating Ireland is Go Green in 2019. Yes, right. Yeah. It's a fantastic idea with sustainability so popular at the moment. Absolutely, and I'm kind of, we're very glad we took that team, that symbolic framework on board, because yes, it is very uh, popular, but I think also that scouting is about, um, you know, us being kind of the lead, taking the lead. Um, in, in our environment and trying to manage the change. So what, which day do you fly out? 18th or 19th? Oh, I go the 18th. Oh, well, uh, absolutely enjoy it. Looking forward know. to it now. And you won't know yourself when you come back. I won't. Or hopefully I'll be about, you know, two stone lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Warren, who's the supervisor with the United States Customs and Border Protection team. And uh, he's going to talk to you today about entering the United States. Mr. Warren. Woo! Morning, guys. So, <clears throat> as Dave said, we brought the border here to you guys. Um, I'm in charge of one of the units there. Okay, uh, I've been in free clearance for three years here in Dublin. Been with the agency for almost 11 years now. Okay, we do take our job very serious. So, as much as I know it's going to be fun for you guys, I'm not saying you can't giggle and laugh over there. But please take and understand that what we do, we take very serious. So, while you're speaking to that officer in that one-on-one -on -one conversation, just take those couple minutes pretty serious. Okay. I might ask you questions that sound silly to you, your name, your date of birth, things like that, but those are very important to us. It helps us uh, identify the person in front of us, okay? Um, so when you land into Dublin Airport or when you arrive at Dublin Airport, you're going to go through Irish security like you would know, go anywhere else uh, within Europe. You're going to go through the security where you take off all your metal and all your laptops and iPads and, and all that stuff. Once you go through that, you're going to be in the airport where all the shops are, once you get down to the pre-clearance area, you're going to see a whole new security again. So this is what a lot of people are not used to. You're going to do double security, okay? The reason for that is those guys are trained by TSA, which will handle our aviation security on the American side. The only difference there is you're going to be required to take off your shoes now, okay? All your shoes come off when you get to that area, and then your liquids come out again, and then all your electronics come out again. You don't have to take off your belts or metal or anything like that because you're not going through a metal detector again. You're just going to do your shoes, your liquids, and your laptops, okay? Then you're going to end up in a big room. Before I get to that, have any of you been to America before? Any of you not been to America? Wow, all right. So, you're gonna get into our area and you're gonna see a whole bunch of, you know, immigration officers there. They're gonna be wearing uniforms similar to mine. to be the dress one, okay? I wore the field one. They're wearing the dress uniform there. Um, in that room, don't take any pictures. Don't take your phones out. Don't start taking selfies. It's not allowed. And if you wanna see one of my officers mad, they do, they do yell. Okay, so please don't do that. Take all your selfies outside in the airport or, or once you pass us. Um, there are no phones in that area. Um, they're gonna ask you questions about yourself, about your, you know, your name, your date of birth, have you been to America before, the length of your stay. And they're one of the important questions where a lot of people get stuck is where you're staying. You need to know the address and the leaders, if you can give them a printout or something so they all know where they're staying. We don't have to know all the addresses. I know you're going to multiple locations. You just need to know one of the addresses you're going to probably the Jamboree, but what um, James was saying earlier, just that address. And I know you're leaving through Canada, so if they ask you that, how long are you staying, just say we're leaving through Canada, um, so you go through a different process there. You won't see us on the way out, okay? Once you pass us, please don't wait behind the officers, because again, you will get yelled at again. You cannot stand behind the officers for security reasons, okay? So what we ask the leaders to do is when there's multiple leaders, have one go through first, and then just kind of wait where you can wait in the waiting area, and then the other one just watch that all the other ones go through, okay? Because you won't be able to be like walking back and forth. Um, if there's something you don't know an answer to, you can turn around and ask the leader in the back, and they can help you out. You know, it's not like, it's not a trick question where we're not gonna let you through. If you don't know that answer, just say, I, I really don't know, let me ask the leader, and, and they'll tell you, you know, you'll get through. Um, so, uh, anybody, non-Irish non passport? What, what country? British. British, okay, so that's fine. British as well. All right, so most of you have ESTA. ESTA is the online Where's program. Hold on, what are the ads? Oh, American. American passport, perfect. Is it valid? You have an American passport. Good. So if you, if you guys have dual citizenship, 
where you're American and Irish, you got to make sure your parents have got you an Irish, I mean an American passport. You won't be able to travel on the Irish passport into America, okay? If you're only Irish or only British, then you're fine with that. If you're on the EU passport, make sure your parents have got you the ESTA, or you have done it yourself. It's an online, kind of like, kind of like a visa, but you do it online. Um, if you haven't got that yet, there's still time. Don't wait till the day of travel. If you wait till the day of travel, you might run into issues. It can take up to 72 hours to approve, and there's nothing we can do to help speed up that process. It's all done in headquarters in Washington, D.C. And uh, although I know the trip is important, if you don't have that approved ESTA, one of you, unfortunately, will be sticking around. You won't, you won't be able to get on that plane, okay? Um, so you'll need, you'll need that ESTA. You'll need to know where you're staying and how long you're staying. Okay, if you're going on holiday after with your family or whatever, you just need to tell them that. Say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm staying 12 days with the scouts and then I'm going to California to bring some sunshine back to Ireland. Okay, so just let the officers know, know the specifics of your trip. Um, food items, guys. If you're bringing food, know that it has to be food that's permissible into the U.S. So when I say permissible, agriculture doesn't allow pork products or beef products into the U.S., okay? or fresh fruits or vegetables of any kind. So you can't bring apples, oranges, bananas. So if you're bringing those into the airport, make sure you eat them before you get to us. It's like you can't eat them once you pass us, like before you get on the plane. They will ask you to bin it. Anything with pork, so don't bring ham and cheese sandwiches or chicken and bacon. It can't have pork or beef. Burger King is sold upstairs. Even if you buy it in the airport, it won't be allowed through us and you just wasted all your money on, on your lunch. Once you pass us, there is some cafes back there that sell permissible food. Um, you want to bring your own food, chicken and turkey, so any type of poultry is allowed, veggie sandwiches are allowed, um, and any type of seafood, so tuna, egg salad is allowed, prawns are allowed, salmon is allowed, all that stuff. There's no beef or pork, guys. No beef or pork, no fruits or vegetables. Um, that's it. That's pretty much, that's all that I have so far. Any questions? So the hotels are basically recycled plastic bottles. So you chop off each end and turn it into like a tube and you fill it with like reeds and bamboo sticks and stuff like that and the bees like to burrow inside so you can bring them home and then you can teach it to your troops and stuff like that bring it home to your house and show your family and everything like that and then the flower bombs are basically like a ball and it's like soil and clay and wildflower seeds all mixed together in like a ball and you plant it and it turns into wildflowers so hopefully we're gonna have like a, a legacy field on the jamboree site so everyone can plant their flower bombs there and it turns into a wildflower field so it'll be really nice if you ever there like in the future you'll see the wildflower field that the irish contingent helped to create that should be nice so basically today i'm going to talk about like sustainability and reusable things and how to reduce your plastic waste on the jamboree so basically say you wake up in the morning and you go to brush your teeth but your toothbrush is plastic so what could you use instead yeah so you can use bamboo or wooden toothbrush looks like this this one right here so the only problem with this one is that it has plastic bristles so you don't want that. It's compostable, the toothbrush, but you have to take off the plastic bristles first. You just get a pliers, take it off. It lasts the exact same amount of time as a plastic toothbrush, and it's good for the environment. And say for your toothpaste, what could you use instead? So your toothpaste is in a plastic container. What could you use instead? So you could use, they're called toothpaste tablets. You can get them in Lush, and you can even make your own. So it's just a little tiny tablet. It looks like a little mint or something. You put it in your mouth, chew it up, and then you brush your teeth with it. It works the exact same way. And you can make your own, so it's really cheap. It's almost free even baking soda and there's a few different things you can add to it to make it like you know, like essence and stuff like that and it makes it nice and um yeah so you can use that and there's loads of recipes online and everything like that so then you go into your shower and you pick up your shampoo bottle but it's made of plastic so what could you use instead shampoo bar. shampoo bar yeah so i brought one with me got one for you guys so this is what it looks like it's just like a little circle like this you use it the exact same way as shampoo you just wet your hair put it in scrub it up and if you bring one of these on the jamboree, it'll last you the whole thing. Just this tiny little bar, it'll save you space, it'll save you money. This cost me a tenner and it lasts for, according to the people in Lush, it lasts for three shampoo bottles or 80 washes. So that's ideal. And you can get conditioning ones as well, and you can get two in ones. So this one is for like volume, but you can get ones that are like, you can get ones for shine, ones for hair nutrition, you can get ones for everything. You can get two in ones. Yeah, so it's ideal, really. So you can get that in Lush, you can get them online. A whole bunch of different shops do them at the moment. And these two brushes, you can get them online as well. You can get them in pennies, but the ones in pennies are wrapped in plastic, so you don't want that. So, yeah, so our next thing is, so you get your body wash, but it's in plastic, so what could you use instead? Soap bar, yeah, just a bar of soap, plain old bar of soap. Get them in loads of different shops. A lot of places do them now without plastic, so just plain bar of soap. 
that's so funny. So say you want to go to Little and you want to buy your breakfast, you want you want to get some fruit. So you go and pick out your fruit, but the only options are plastic bags to put it in. So what could you do instead? Let's see. Paper bag, yeah, you could bring a paper bag or you could bring your own bag, you could even throw it in your little rucksack if you have that with you. Anything you want really. And um, yeah, so they're all loose, you can just put it in your own bag. You can bring like a tote bag or you can get these like vegetable bags now that they're pretty small and you can put things in it. So it's pretty nice. Yeah, so you can do that. And a lot of shops now, they're noticing. So people have started, say you buy tomatoes, they're in plastic already. So people have started taking them out of the plastic and leaving the plastic behind in the shops. And shops are noticing this and they're providing like bins at the end and like things to recycle and stuff like that. And they're also starting to change the packaging and reduce the plastic. So it all comes from the people. So if the people start complaining about things, it goes to the shops and the shops realize that they're not gonna make money unless they start changing. And then the more that they use reusable things, it's like a trend now. So people start buying the things and their profits go up. So then they notice things like that. So yeah, so, and then, so you all have your reusable bottles, don't you? You all got some? Yeah, so on the Jamboree site, you should all be using these. And they keep your water cold as well. It's cold inside, keep it cold for a few hours. And if you put hot things inside it, it'll keep it cold as well. So that's pretty handy. So I don't wanna, oh no, I said hot things keep it cold. It'll keep it hot as well. <laughs> If you put hot things inside of it, it'll keep it hot as well, so like tea or something, but you probably won't want tea in the Japanese side. Yeah, but I am, um, so I don't want to be seeing anyone from the Irish contingent with a uh, single-use plastic bottle. We're going to be using these all day long. And there's hydration stations all over the site, so you can fill up your, stop laughing at me. <laughs> you can fill up your water bottle all around the place. And even the airport, in Dublin airport, you just empty it. You can bring these through in your hand luggage. You just empty the water out, drink it before you go through, go through, and then the, just after security, you can fill it right up again. So it's really handy, so you don't have to buy a plastic bottle in there. And they're changing their plain water, they're changing it to um, like cardboard boxes, box water. You know their plain water, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so, and also, so 90% of fish for consumption, okay, well 90% of fish for consumption contain plastic. So you're not just saving the fish, when you reduce your plastic, you're also saving yourself. And people will consume on average a credit card sized amount of plastic per week. Isn't that mad? 52 weeks in a year, 52 credit cards. Not crazy. So your little difference of changing your toothbrush or changing your toothpaste will eventually make a big difference and reduce your impact on the We world. are coming back from the Irish contingent that is at Lart Hill this weekend. I'm just walking back to the car park. There's so much stuff going on in Lart Hill this weekend. It's uh, the memorial service for scouters that have passed. There's the Scouting Ireland contingent to the World Scout Jamboree. They are coming. Um, they're doing their last event before they actually go off to the airport to the to go off to the summit Betrol Reserve and uh, we caught up with Stephanie McCann who is the contingent leader and uh, all the different activities they're all just doing different activities uh, they're collecting their uniforms today and uh, right behind me back that that direction right there uh, they are, are beginning to get their tents up to camp for the weekend uh, a bit of a get together before they go off to the world scout jamboree the scouting movement is listening unlock the 24th world scout jamboree with live audio facebook live and youtube live only on scouting radio don't forget you can get the scouting radio badge the 24th world scout jamboree badge i'm holding it up to our webcam at the moment we're running out of them. So we're thinking of doing another batch. And if you're interested in getting the World Scout Jamboree badge, that badge right there, if you're interested in getting it, you can contact us on our website, www.scoutingradio.com. And uh, we might run another batch. Those badges were sponsored by Karuna Badges um, and all proceeds going to Keeping Scouting Radio Broadcasting to you on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Twitter, and also on demand as a podcast, you can visit our website, www.scoutingradio.com, um, and download our podcast there. Uh, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Android, we're on Apple, loads of places you can find us. And uh, love to hear your comments about what you are getting up to as you head off to the World Scout Jamboree, including Unit 41 Cumbria and Isle of Man and uh, they have a little woolly sheep called Where's Woolly and uh, I'm sure that woolly is going to the Jamboree as well and did you notice that there's a little cardboard cutout that you can bring of Baden Powell and uh, they're looking for you to use the hashtag and uh, bring Baden Powell with you 
on the Jamborees as a flat pack 2D model. Absolutely crazy. If you can fit that in your luggage, that's great. Talking about luggage, um, <laughs> you've seen that the border controls in Ireland as part of our video there and uh, sounds from Larchfield during the weekend. So much going on at the weekend as well. And we're ramping up to the World Scout Moot. Have a look at this. The next, so the, the World Scout Jamboree is taking place this year. And the next world event for, for participants is the World Scout Moot, which is taking place in 2021 and it's taking place in Ireland. So it's the very first world event that we've ever hosted. It's going to be the 16th World Scout Moot. And it's for people who are aged between 18 and 26. So if you can do a little bit of maths, how many of you will be 18 or over in 2021? So you can all be participants on the moose and they can So in the summer of 2021. So it's when we at the January this year, there's gonna be so many people that will be eligible to be participants in the moose. And we're trying to attract between five and six thousand people to come to Ireland in 2021. So we want you to be ambassadors for the moose. So please let people know that it's happening in Ireland, that it's in 2021. Um, what age range it's for, tell them all about Ireland, be really positive about Ireland. Um, it's going to take place from the 19th until the 29th of July, and it's different from a World Scout Jamboree. So, for a Jamboree, you're part of a contingent, you're part of a troop within a contingent, and part of a patrol. But for the, for the moot, you're, while you're part of a contingent, you're split into international patrols. So, you might be the only person from Ireland in your patrol, um, in your tribe, potentially. Um, You'll be mixed with ten. There'll be ten people in each patrol, and we'll we'll spread people with different languages, different cultures, different nationalities as much as we can, so that it's really the, the best international experience you'll ever have. Because you're working with them all day, you're doing programs, you're doing activities, you're living with them, you're cooking with them, you're looking at their cleaning habits and everything else. But it's completely uh, multicultural immersion, which is a fantastic experience, and it isn't really replicated in any other type of environment. And um, so what will happen is everybody will meet in Dunk City Centre on uh, the 19th of July. We'll have an opening ceremony. And then each of the, the tribes will go off on trails around the country. So our intention is to have between 36 and 60 trails, depending on the number that we have. And they'll be all across Ireland. So it's a great opportunity for Scouting Ireland to actually showcase what we have on offer for groups, every part of the country and counties to get involved in supporting and delivering the trails that are local to them. So if you're from a part of the country that people don't visit very often or people that have something that is really an attractive uh, place to go to, we're hoping to have trails in all those locations and you can showcase what we have on offer. People will choose, so all the participants will, will specify their interest in terms of they really want to do loads of physical stuff and a medium amount of cultural stuff and a medium amount of environmental stuff. But we'll have a combination of categories and they'll specify what level of each one of those they want to do. So we'll allocate people then to the trails based on their preferences. So you're going to have people who have similar interests mixed together in, in tribes and trolls, and they'll do uh, program activities that are related to them. Um, and then we'll come back together, everybody together, all five to six thousand people, and we'll have a January style camp in Malahide Castle in the grounds in there. So it'll be a really nice showcase of that because we don't even have castles of the same structure. People are already fascinated that the fact that we have the castle in the backdrop. backdrop. Um, so we'll have a Jamboree style camp there, so you'll still camp with your, with your international patrol and your tribe, but you'll be back with the other people uh, uh, on your contingent as well, so you can, you can get to know more people. Um, and we'll have the various different program activities and bases like what you would find on Jamboree with, with um, celebrations and events and ceremonies and things like that as well. Um, so the theme of the moose is Lakela. So everybody know what that means? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're not translating it together, we're keeping it in Irish. We want, we want people to learn Irish and we teach them a couple of people as well. And um, so it's Michaela and the intention. So the last World Scout Moot took place in Iceland in 2017 and their theme was change. And it was all about how we can all change the world for better and we can make changes and we can change ourselves and, and change our behaviour to, to, to make a difference. And what we're doing is we're building on that and saying actually look what we can do together. So all of us can individually take action, but collectively we can actually have a bigger impact. So you know it sounds really cheesy, but cheese works and it is a really positive um, team to get to get on board with. So spread the word, Michaela, and don't forget to follow. Get to follow on the team. Um, that's the theme. So when people are when you're talking to people and you're telling them you're from Ireland, make sure they're aware that the move is happening and that's their next opportunity to, to be a participant. 
at a world event. Um, they, if they're interested in getting involved, we have more information. We're gonna, you can pass them to us. We're gonna be in the Better World tent and um, in the center point of the Jamboree site. You can also refer them to the Irish Contingent tent. We'll also have further information. And we have a Facebook page, an Instagram, um, and a Twitter account, and a website, which are all here. So make sure you like them yourself, and then get everyone else to like them. We'll hopefully be running a few competitions throughout the Jamboree, just for people who are at the Jamboree, so we can get more swag. Um, so get them to get involved in that as well. So we're trying to be going green, we're not going to get a huge amount of interest and things like that. We're doing digital promotion as much as we can. So spread the word, get people involved in it, and point them in our direction if they have more specific questions on anything. And um, if they are interested in, in, in going to the moot, what they have to do is they have to go through their own contingent. So at the moment, lots of countries, lots of NSOs have appointed their um, contingent management team or their head of contingent at this point somewhere are, are still in that process. But by the end of the year, we should have the most um, contingents set up and that's how they register. So they go through their own contingent and then the contingent will register them all to the moot, like the way you registered for the Jamboree. For me, Justin Dawson, uh, thank you for tuning in. This is a quick bulletin as we are 29 days to the World Scout Jamboree. And if you are attending, let us know by visiting our website, www.scoutingradio.com. You can email me, studio at scoutingradio.com. You can tweet me at scoutingradio and uh, visit our website or facebook.com forward slash scoutingradio. Subscribe there We're on YouTube and all the details on our official website, www.scoutingradio.com The scouting movement is listening. Unlock the 24th World Scout Jamboree with live audio, Facebook Live and YouTube Live only on Scouting Radio. Want to learn more about scouting? Log on to scoutingradio.com or follow us on our Facebook page and get the latest on your Facebook newsfeed at facebook.com slash scoutingradio.